All right, guys, welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to add simple graphics to our empty window, like adding the small rectangle. We also learned how to add labels of text. So for our scores, I've added two zeros over here. And then in this video, we are going to add our ball in the middle of our screen. And we also in future videos, we need to add paddles so that we can hit the balls and stuff like that. But right now we're just gonna focus on the ball and as I say, we're gonna keep our eye on the prize. So ball is the most important part of our ping pong game. So let's just start by creating that. So we're gonna create another class and we're gonna call that class as pong ball. And just like we did in the pong game, we are gonna inherit it from the widget class. So basically we are creating another widget. And uh, inside this, I'm, for right now, I'm just gonna write pass. So that, and pass basically means do nothing because you can't just leave it empty. Python doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, so I'm just gonna write pass over here. It basically means do nothing. And just like we did in the last video, we need to create a simple pong ball, which will be in a shape of an ellipse. So ellipse is a very close relative of a circle, so that should be fine. So instead of uh, just creating another canvas inside our pong game, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another widget over here. I'm gonna call it pong ball. And inside this, we are gonna create uh, another canvas. And what we are gonna do is, even before we create our canvas, I'm gonna give this pong ball a size. So let's make sure the indentations are correct. Otherwise, it's gonna mess it up. So we're gonna give it a size of 50 by 50 pixels. So the width is going to be 50 and the height is gonna be 50. And then inside the canvas, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put an ellipse, just like we did over here. So instead of the rectangle, we're gonna put an ellipse. So we're just gonna write ellipse, make sure that the spelling of ellipse is correct. And then we're gonna give it a position. So position going to be self dot position. So what does self mean? Self, whenever we write self, it basically means that you should refer to the widget itself in which we are currently working on. So we're currently working on this pong ball. So it's gonna refer to the pong ball. Where is this pong ball? And we haven't put any position yet, but soon you're gonna understand how just writing self dot pause gives it a position. But even before that, we need to give it a size. So similarly, we are gonna ask it to refer it to itself because we have already given the size over here. So I'm just gonna write self dot size. And then for the position over here, what I'm gonna do is, so if we just execute it right now, our pong ball is not gonna come. Let's actually execute it so that you guys can see. As you can see, there is no ball over here, which is a little bit sad because we are all suffering from quarantine and no balls, like no fun. So <laughs> we need to go out, play some sports. But anyways, uh, yeah, so let's, let's just make a pong ball game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this pong ball inside this pong game. So what we're gonna do is, um, it's very simple. Just we're just gonna add a pong ball over here. So I'm just gonna write pong and ball. And this looks pretty good. And uh, if you missed the joke that I said previously because right now coronavirus is like really going crazy, I hope you guys are safe. And uh, that's why this weird, like joke makes more sense. If you're watching is after one year, maybe it doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I explained the joke so much, but anyways, let's get back to our uh, pong ball game. But anyways, so pong ball. So here we have uh, just like said that we make sure that the pong game has a pong ball, otherwise it's not gonna appear on the screen. And then where do we want it to appear? We want it to appear somewhere in the center. So we are gonna tell the pong ball to appear in the center, but it doesn't know what the center position is. So what we are gonna tell is, just make sure that it's in the center of the pong, beam, pong game. So we're just gonna write self dot parent dot center. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna go to its parent, which is pong game, and it's gonna ask, what is your center? And I'm gonna put, my center in the middle of your center, which is like inception center. So the center of our pong game is somewhere over here. So we are just gonna like put the center as the center of this whole window. So this looks pretty good. And um, one more thing is, let me just execute it so that you guys can see that it's working properly. All right, so this looks pretty good. We have a ball over here. And one more thing I wanted to discuss before we go further is that why have we put the size over here and not over here? So for example, if we put the size over here, if we just remove all of this uh, line from here and we just put the size over here and if we run it again, you can see the difference that it makes. So I'm just gonna reload it. And as you can see that the ball is a little bit misaligned. So whenever you put inside the canvas, whenever you put the size inside the canvas, what it's gonna do is it's gonna just draw this ball 
in the center but it will be drawn from the right hand side so you can see that the right hand side of this ball is in the center and similarly the top side of this ball is in the center but what we want is the center of this ball to be in the center i hope that makes a little bit sense so what we are going to do is similarly we're just going to remove this and we're just going to write size and when we just write the size inside our widget, not inside the canvas, then it makes sure that the center of the ball is in the center, not the left hand and the top hand side. So let's just write this and everything should be working fine. All right, so now that we have created the ball, we can finally work on the movement of the ball. Now in this video, we are not gonna fully animate the ball. We are just going to work for the preparation of the animation of the ball a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is instead of this pass, I'm gonna write velocity x. So let me just clear this out, velocity underscore x. So basically this variable is for the velocity in x direction. And one more thing I want to make clear is that what is the difference between velocity and speed? So speed just gives you the direction, not the direction, just how many distance has it covered in how much time. So for example, five meter per second is like it has covered five meters in one second per second. So the difference between velocity and speed is that velocity also has direction along with the speed. So for example, it's moving at five meter per second, but in a particular direction that can be north, south, something like that. So that is the idea behind using velocity and not speed. And you'll understand a little bit more why we have used this velocity as we go further along this video. So before we even go further, let's import something from Kiwi and uh, that is going to be Kiwi and then properties. And we are gonna import something known as a numeric property. So this velocity X is going to be a numeric property and its default value is going to be zero. So what is this numeric property? So this basically tells the compiler or the interpreter that this velocity underscore X is a number or an integer. So why exactly we do we need this numeric property? Because Python can automatically know that this velocity underscore X is just a number or an integer. We need this because this code is not going to be just on Python, it's going to be on Java and some other programming languages because we are going to be importing this program of Kiwi on Android. And if you know, Android works on Java and Java doesn't automatically know that a variable has a numeric property. It needs to be typed or it needs to be defined. The type needs to be defined. And that is why we need this numeric property. So similarly as velocity x, we are gonna create another variable of velocity y because we need directions of both the velocities. So and I'm just gonna add numeric property over here also. And this zero is basically the default value of this variable. So we are starting with a velocity of zero, both in x direction and both in y direction. And then we need another property known as a reference list property. So let me just create this line and then I'm gonna explain what it does. So first we're just gonna create a variable of velocity, a new variable. So this reference list property helps when we want to refer to the velocity x and velocity y at the same time. So what if we want to get both the values at the same time or we want to change both the values at the same time, then we need a way to refer to both of them at the same time. And that is where this reference list property comes in. So I'm just gonna write reference property over here and then I'm gonna write the both of the x and the velocity of the y inside it. So I'm just gonna write velocity x, comma, velocity y, and this looks pretty good. Now we can just use this velocity variable to refer to both velocity x and velocity y. So now what we are gonna do is that we are gonna work on the movement. So if you have missed your physics classes in high school, make sure you're on your toes. So we are gonna create a variable known as move and then it's just gonna refer to itself. And inside it, what we are gonna do is we are gonna work on the movement of this ball. So even before we do that, I just want to explain to you what we are like learning in high school. So if you skip the classes, it's fine. So how do we calculate the latest position of the ball? So latest position of the ball, let me just write that. Latest position of the ball is going to be the current velocity. So current velocity, and it will be added to the current position. So current position, all right. So the latest position is equal to current velocity in the vector form and the current position. So what is this uh, addition over here? So I'm not gonna go more into depth of it, just like kind of understand that. And because velocity also has direction and it has the current position, if we add both of them, then it will give us the latest position. Now the last is the latest position. So, but this velocity needs to be in vector form because right now we just have like these integer values 
we don't have the direction so if you give the direction so for example if we give the direction that it's moving in the right hand side and we also have the current position and we have the speed at which it is moving so for example it's moving at 10 meter per second so we know that it's gonna move 10 meters in one second and then we also know the direction is which it's gonna move so for example right now it's moving on the right hand side and we know it's gonna move 5 meter in one second so we need to make sure that the latest position is just going to add it between these two. It will get added and it will give us the latest position. And I will explain more of this in the next video. But for right, need to, like, but for right now, just understand that the latest position is equal to current velocity and the current position. So what we're going to do inside this def move method is that we're going to just write self dot pause. So what's going to be the latest position? So we need to add the current velocity and current velocity also has direction. And how do we get that? So we get that by using the vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write from Kiwi dot vector and we are going to import something known as a vector. So this vector is just basically a form which also gives the direction of the velocity. And how do you write that? You just use vector and inside this you put a multiplier sign and then you just write self dot velocity. And this is where the reference list property is coming in handy because we are able to refer to the x and y directions and the velocity at the same time. And then we just need to add it to the current position that is self dot pause. And that will give us the latest position of our pom pole. Now this is just the preparation for the next video. I'm going to go more into depth about what is this vector and what is this line over here more in like a graphic form so that you guys can understand it a little bit better. So anyways, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.